this game has elemental reactions, and I'm not talking about the basic fire counters ice type of stuff. I mean the kind of reaction where we see in Genshin Impact that when you combine multiple elements, you get some special effects. Over the past weeks, I have been in my CN veteran spirit, diving into the CN server of Ash Echoes, getting a feel of everything ahead of the global release. And let me tell you, this game has one of the deepest combat system for a gacha game. Ash Echo combat has many layers that make it very interesting, and I can already see this becoming a huge project on the channel. And hey, if the devs are out there listening, don't be shy about, you know, a sponsorship offer. Just putting it out there. Anyway, seriously though, I want to make this video to share my first impression of the game and also let you all know that I am planning to cover the game in the long term. So here is what I like about Ash Echo so far and why I think it's worth keeping an eye on. Let's start by talking about the combat system. Usually when it comes to gacha games that use real-time combat system, you'd expect things to be, well, pretty automatic. You drop your character in and they just kind of handle everything for you as long as their stats are high enough, right? But Ash Echoes is different. Sure, around 95% of the game's content can easily cleared on auto when you land up dispute, but that last 5%, that's where things get interesting, and manual control becomes crucial. Sometimes, it can be as simple as moving a character to dodge an incoming attack, nothing too fancy, but other times, you're setting up barriers, blowing away poisons, clouds, glancing the ground, or sometimes carefully laying down elements on the battlefield for a well-timed virtual rotation. In this game, how character interact with the stage as a whole is very interesting, and to make this easier to experience, let's look at some quick example while explaining what is going on. Here, there are some clouds of poison gas on the ground. Not only does it damage any character standing in it, but it also makes the enemy in that area untargetable by character outside. So I bring in a character with a wind ability, blowing the poison cloud away, and bam, problem solved. Sometimes, you've got projectiles coming in from enemies that would normally do a tons of damage, but with a quick barrier setup, I can block them all and keep my team safe without having to scramble out of range. Let's also look at this quick footage of a simple boss fight. I start the fight by activating the beast mode of my beast boy with his ultimate, activate the damage buff of my support from her skill, use beast boy's skill in his beast mode to create a fire patch under boss's feet, then with the ground on fire, I then follow up with my electric DPS's skills to deal damage to the boss, each hit dealing bonus damage due to the overload reaction. Those are still just the basics. I'm still working my way up in the CN server, so there is plenty I haven't fully understand or experienced yet, but I can already tell that as I progress further into the game, the possibility for team building and also combat setups are only getting more interesting. Outside of combat, one of the game's most unique feature is how it approached gearing, and it's unlike anything I've seen in other gacha games. Here, gear is called memory traces, and this ends your typical character-specific pieces. Each memory trace provides team-wide stats and also passive skills, meaning they don't just boost one character, they shape your whole team's power and playstyle. You could make a setup that's focused on frontline damage, or you could stack cooldown reduction effect to get more out of certain casters. The flexibility here is huge, allowing to create entirely different playstyles even with similar character lineups. And it doesn't stop here, you can unlock the full potential of memory traces not only by leveling them up but also going through a roguelike mode that lets you customize your gear further. As for progress, you'll keep finding new ways to tweak and personalize your build. Plus, each gear set is linked to a specific character in your team, who brings their own passive that enhances everyone's performance. It's an extra layer of customization that adds even more to the depth of team building. Now, I know at this point, this might starting to sound a bit too complicated, but don't worry, I'm planning to put out some solid guides to make this system easy to understand. And also, I will share some setups CM players have already created, so anyone can enjoy this game. 
There's one more thing I want to mention, Ash Echo is launching with a lot of quality of life features that were added later to the CN server, which is actually a huge advantage for global players. For example, that roguelike mode for gearing, it can be run on auto. Sim player didn't have that on release, so while you still want to go menu now and then to find the perfect setup, having auto make it way less grindy when you are just getting some progression gear set without getting into heavy min-maxing in the early game. You can also sweep most of the stages in the game after the initial clear, which make clearing daily pretty quickly and let you focus more on the endgame content and events. From what I've seen, they've really leaned into making the general grind as hand-free as possible. The game will also have pretty generous launch based on what I've found with the Tavern server launch. Now, I can't guarantee it will be the same for global, but when the game launched in the Taiwan a few months back, they gave out 100 character pools and 100 gear pools just for logging in for 30 days, which is pretty cool, especially when you factor in all the other rewards like first time clearing in different modes and even bonuses. And you know, despite being pretty generous, the 4 star and 5 star character in this game is actually viable. The highest rarity is 6 star, but you can build some powerful teams without having to chase top tier characters right out of the gate. There is also this 5 star character that the CM player actually calls the 7 star god. She is still somehow one of the best general healer slash buffer until this day, even though she was one of the release 5 stars. And that's pretty much where I'm at with Ash Echoes after a week or so on the CN server. I'm planning to stick with it and dive deeper into the systems. So as the global release gets closer, I'm hopefully going to have some more guides ready to help you build your first team, pick the right memory traces, and make the early game a breeze to progress through. Also, not to sound like a broken record, but devs, if you are listening, a sponsorship would be greatly appreciated because I really don't want to advertise a scented candle. And as always, this has been Steam Banex. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.